All right, hey, 20-2. So in this lesson, we're just putting it all together. So we we've actually done some of all these questions. We just want to go through a bunch of word problems now. Okay, so this first one says, the path of the ball for many golf <clears throat> shots can be modeled by a quadratic function. The path of a golf ball hit at an angle of about 10 degrees to the horizontal can be modeled by the function h of d is equal to negative yada yada yada, where h of d is the height of the ball in meters and d is the horizontal distance the ball travels in meters until it first hits the ground. So it says, what's the maximum height reached by the ball? So this is pretty tough to deal with. So we're just gonna punch that into our calculator. So just grab your calculator. Okay, so once you get that uh, put into your calculator, you're gonna get something that looks like this. You're gonna have to adjust the window settings. My window settings that I found were these. I just went um, X max was about 250, Y max was about 50. So I ended up with this kind of kind of view. I could have went lower on the Y, it looks like. Um, and then it's looking for what's the maximum height reached by the ball. Well, H of D, that is my height, right? So my Y axis, that's that's all it's looking for. So the, the, looking for the very peak up here. So all we have to do is go menu, analyze graph, and then we're looking for a maximum. We're looking for a vertex at the maximum. So we're gonna go vert or maximum click to the left of the top, click to the right, and it says, oh yeah, you want the maximum? So you click that, and the maximum is at 100, and so X is equal to 100, and Y is equal to 20. So our maximum height reached here is gonna be 20, right? That's our Y uh, coordinate, that's, that's the going up the Y axis there. So in this case, maximum height reached by the ball is gonna be 20 meters. What's the horizontal distance of the ball from the <clears throat> golfer when the ball reaches its maximum height? So it's just saying how far over will this thing go when it gets to its very top? So it's really just looking for that number now. So right at the vertex, that's 100. So it's going to go over to 100 right there. So the next, so it's going to be at 100 meters. And last one, uh, what distance does the ball travel horizontally until it first hits the ground. So if I look at this again, you can kind of intuitively tell that it's going to be twice as much as that, right? If it goes, if it's 100 right there, that's going to be right in the middle. This is going to be 200, but just to be sure, let's check. That's going to be our x-axis that we'll find. So if you want to find the x-axis, you go menu, analyze graph, and now it's called a zero, right? That's another name for the x-axis. Sometimes it's called solution. Um, so go zero, and the same process you just go to the left of it you go to the right of it and yeah it is 200 so this is going to be 200 meters so i'm going to let you guys go ahead and see if you can do the next one on your own i'll carry on and uh and work on this one okay so this type of question is about maximizing area so this one actually and then the next um four and five yeah they're all about maximizing area so the way this is going to work is we know that so it says a rectangular field is to be enclosed by 400 meters of fence they're all going to give you some kind of like amount of fence that you're allowed to have so what we have to do is if you had a rectangle let's call this side y and this side x and we need to figure out maximum area of the inside here, right? That's the end goal. So what we do know though, is that going around the outside here, I've got two Y's. Oh, whoa, what just happened? We've got a Y on this side, right? And a Y on the other side. We've got two X's as well. So if I want my total perimeter all the way around the outside, I know that that has to be equal to 400, right? That's all the fence that, that I have. So what I'm gonna say first, I'm gonna make my first equation is gonna be two times x, so like this side and this side, plus two times y, so this side and this side, oh, and two times y, is gonna be equal to 400. Okay, so that's equation number one. Then the next thing you're gonna have to do for all these ones is we're, we're gonna wanna solve for either x or y. We're gonna want just y on its own. So I'm gonna solve for y here um, so what I'm going to do is subtract 
2x from both sides, so subtract 2x there, they cancel, subtract 2x. This becomes 2y is equal to 400 uh, minus 2x, from the 2x I just subtracted there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2 to get rid of that 2. So divide that by 2, divide that side by 2, and I've got y is equal to, and this is really the same thing as just 400 divided by 2 and 2x divided by 2, right? Like I could rewrite that, that thing as 400 over 2 minus 2x over 2. So you can just simplify each one of those, right? So if I do that, that would just end up being 200, right? 400 divided by 2 minus 2 divided by 2 is just 1, so that just becomes x. So what I have left over here, same thing, right? It's just 200 minus x. Okay, so we made, we made an expression. So that's step number one. So that's... That's our y value that we figured out, right? That's formula number one. Okay, next formula that we're gonna do is to figure out the area of a, of a rectangle, it's just base times height, right? So in this case, it's just gonna be x times y. So just x here and then, and then y. So we can do that because, so let's just write over here, area, so let's call that a, is gonna be equal to base times height, or in this case, we're gonna call it x times y. But now, here's why we made this expression down here, is because now I know what y is equal to. y is equal to um, this thing, right? That's what y is equal to, that's what it says right there. So what I can do is rewrite this area expression. I can say area is equal to, I'll keep x there, but now instead of writing y, I'm going to write this. 200 minus x. And that's pretty much it. If you, if you put that into your calculator, you're going to get a quadratic equation. Um, what you might want to do is write it more like kind of the typical way that we'd see it. The next step is you just go x times 200, x times x. So this would become area is equal to... 200x minus x squared. And you might wanna just rearrange the order, like swap those two things around to write it with the higher power first. So area is equal to negative x squared plus 200x. And then just pop that into your calculator. That's pretty much all we need to do now. So the first one says write an equation to determine, so we, we figured out the equation, good. And determine what dimensions that will give a maximum area. So we don't really know what dimensions will give a maximum area yet. We just know that like whatever we put in for X will give us some area. To figure out a maximum area, what we need to do now is put this into our calculator. So grab your calculator. Okay, so when you graph this, you'll end up getting something that looks like a quadratic equation again, right? And again, we're looking for our uh, vertex. So you might need to find the vertex again. I think this one's still, I don't know why I gave it to me left over from last time maybe, I don't know. Um, so yeah, you're gonna do that. Um, one thing though, just your window settings, you might be struggling to figure out what like, you know, what to put in for, you know, your, your Y max, how to find the top of that thing. Um, probably the best way to find the top of it is if you think about it, we had to make 400 meters of fence, right? So X would be, you know, somewhere around like, you know, 200 and Y would be somewhere around 200. And then when I want to figure out my area, if I went 200 times 200, that ends up being like 40,000. So that might be a good number to try first. To, is 40,000 in place of your Y max, right? I did that, but realized that that was, you know, a bit too much. And I, and I dialed back, back a bit, but at least that'd be a good place to start. And you'd, you'd end up seeing your graph. Now get you in the right ballpark, right? You'll end up having the right amount of zeros in there anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, there'd be a bit of playing around with that though. But anyway, so you found your um, vertex and just remember what this means. So you've got a um, hundred, so that's how far you are over here. And then 
um, one and then capital E plus four. Remember what that means. I just want to make sure you remember. So if, when your calculator says one E four, that really means one times 10 to the four, which really just means that it's one with four zeros behind it. So one, two, three, four. Yeah. So that's what that means. So that, that would be your maximum area there, right? So when it says, what is the maximum area? Well, this is my Y value, right? So when I did that, that's going to be a hundred. So that's, or sorry, um, 10,000. So that's going to be my maximum area there, right? Now the other one, so I figured out my maximum area. I kind of did B first. This one says, what dimensions, uh, what are the dimensions that would give you the maximum area? So it's saying that X at that maximum area is gonna be equal to 100. So that's what the bottom value would be there when that's a maximum. So this would be 100 at the maximum. And I have an equation that I can just plug into here for Y. So Y right here says that Y is equal to 200 minus um, X so um, just so you'd say Y is equal to 200 minus my X value which is a hundred so Y would be equal to a hundred as well so the max values here maybe I'll just write this up here the dimensions this is getting messy would be X is equal to 100 and Y is equal to 100. Okay, so I know this is gonna take a bit of practice to kind of get used to. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and try try the next one here. So I'll kind of help you set it up a little bit though and then, and then you can do it on your own. So it says, a cattle farmer wants to build a rectangular fence enclosed, uh, divided into five rectangular pens as shown in the diagram. So we're gonna do the same type of thing and you can say, again, I'm gonna call this side X and that's the same as the top, right? And I'm gonna call this side Y. But when you go to set up your equation, so this time it's just saying it's 120 meters of fence available, and then find the overall to make a total maximum area. So same question, right? The only thing is these extra pens in the middle. But it doesn't make it really any harder because all you're going to do is when you set up your original formula, I have this X value right from there to there. I'm calling that X. That's the same as the top. So just like last time, my equation is going to start out by being 2X because there's one on the bottom, one on the top. Plus, now this is what changes is my Y's. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six y's. So now my equation is just going to be 2x plus 6y is equal to 120. Okay, now again, you're going to solve for y. So we need to rearrange this for y. This would become 6y is equal to 120 minus 2x. I just subtracted 2x from both sides. And then divided by 6y. Okay, now, just like I said last time, it, this really ends up just being like 120 divided by 6 and 2 divided by 6. So let's rewrite this. I wish I wouldn't have done this over here. Let's rewrite it down here. And I'm left with y is equal to 120 divided by 6 is just 20. Minus, now really what I have here is 2 over 6, right? So that, that's really just 1 over 3, x. So that's going to be my expression for y now. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, now area, I'm doing too much of this. Area, again, is going to be x times y. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and figure out what's next. So do that one, do number five, and then, yeah, I'll save these ones for the next video. So I'll end that video there and I'll start a new one uh, right now.